Royal Rift continues as the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Sussex reunite to pay tribute to their late mother, albeit in separate appearances. The Diana Awards takes place in London, with Prince William there in person to give out some awards, while Harry joins afterwards via Zoom from the Montecito Mansion. It really is a stark contrast to years gone by when the pair came together. Now, you might see the Diana legacy at work here, because at the end of the day, the Diana legacy is all about, surely, the legacy of Diana, Princess of Wales. But of course, it turns out the legacy is that her two sons not only don't speak to each other, not only can't be seen together, but actually can't even do an event together at all without actually being completely and utterly separated uh, by sort of 10,000 miles. Meanwhile, of course, Meghan Markle decides to relaunch herself for some reason on exactly the same day as Diana Legacy Day. And she's now reached out and decided that she's gonna kick off a new business called American Riviera Orchard, which appears to be an online hack for selling jam, for selling foodstuffs and for selling pots and pans. There's a new video out, uh, which you can see now, uh, where she's seen in a kitchen sort of whisking something. Uh, she said that this is all of the things that are close to her heart. Um, and she's gonna be doing a Netflix cooking show as well as a blog and possibly another book. Oh my God. Let us get the wisdom of former BBC Royal Correspondent, Mr. Michael Cole. Michael, I barely know where to begin. I mean, you know, on the very day that the legacy of Diana is being discussed, uh, albeit grumpily, uh, by Princes William and Harry, she decides to launch a new business, which is being called sort of TIG2. Um, her new online business is all done, very hush-hush. Um, it's all a bit mysterious. And, you know, what's it all about? How ironic is that, Michael? The Diana Awards to recognize young people who've done good things in the spirit of Diana. Prince William's there. It only happens once every two years. He's giving out the awards. And when he leaves, there'll be a video message uh, from California from his younger brother. They cannot even bear to be in the same room remotely, right. uh, even by video. It, it is really quite terrible. And I can only tell you how how distressed their mother would be. Mm. Michael, uh, that she loved those boys. She really did to distraction. And she always felt they would be there for each other, support each other. Uh, they'd be there against the world if necessary. And uh, to see what is happening with them would break her heart. I remember once uh, talking to her not long before she was so tragically killed. And uh, Prince William was growing up quite tall and I said to her, you've really bred some height into the royal family. And she looked at me and she said, and good looks, Michael, and good looks. <laughs> she was so proud of them. Yes. Really, really proud of them. Every mother loves her children. It's, it's to be hoped. But she loved those boys. Uh, and to see them at loggerheads as they are, uh, sniping at each other, or in fact, let's give credit to William. He's never said anything publicly. Uh, about this. The only thing Riposte ever made was when he said, uh, this is very much not a racist family. That was uh, in answer yes. three years ago to that notorious interview with Oprah Winfrey. And as you say, back in uh, California, uh, the, the wonderful Megan is going off on her own little tack uh, at a particular moment, which presumably suits her. You seriously couldn't make it up. But it is, at the end of the day, more than ironic. It is actually tragic because um, there are few worse sights in the world, Michael, uh, than brothers fighting each other. Right. And when they're royal brothers, it's that much the worse. Yes. And we're learning as well, which is something we probably already knew. I mean, I think I've read this before, that the enmity goes all the way back to when um, Harry first sort of brought the uh, Meghan into the fold and, you know... William expressed surprise that they were getting married quite so quickly as they were. And that seems to have been where it all started, because before that, they were getting on famously. But she's now going off to run what's being called a lifestyle and cooking brand called American Riviera Orchard, which is like two steps away uh, from QVC in the shopping channel, isn't it? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> low rent stuff. I mean, she might say that she's creating, you know, beautiful jams and condiments for your table. And I'm gonna mix this uh, white rice with some brown rice and it's gonna come out so beautiful. And here you are, and here's a recipe for chocolate pudding. You know, what the hell does she think she's doing? 
Are you sure you haven't been on QVC, Mike? You did uh, that no. so well. It's the one place I've <laughs> never been. It's, it's the only place I've never been. Uh, I, think. I think I think it's worth remembering this. After the now Prince and Princess of Wales were married in 2011, um, Prince Harry more or less moved into their apartments at yeah. Kensington Palace. He was so close to them. Mm. He got on so well uh, with uh, Kate. I think William was even slightly jealous of right. how close his brother was getting to his new bride. They could not have been friendlier. They could not have been happier. Those were the, that was the era of the happy prince. What happened? Well, everything that's happened has happened post Meghan. Mm. Uh, and of course, when she was living briefly at Nottingham Cottage in in uh, Kensington Palace, she used to trot down uh, Kensington High Street to there's a Californian whole food yes. uh, shop uh, in what was the Barker Center, the Bar the old Barker's department yeah. store, of which I was a main board director at one time. But yeah. that's beside the point. Well, listen, you and went she a used long to way around to, to tell us shop. that. But by the way, also <laughs> where the, the headquarters of the Daily Mail is, I don't wonder if she knew that at the time. Oh, it is. It is, of course, and part of the shop was this California shop. I can't remember its name, and anyway, we don't want to advertise it's Whole Foods, it. yeah. Whole Foods but, is the name. Oh, well, you've done it then. Fantastic. But that was very much part of her thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's a great proselytizer. She, she's always telling other people what to do and what's good and, yeah. and say, look at me, aren't I wonderful? If you do what I tell you, you can be as beautiful and, and fabulous and radiant as I am. And that's the message that's coming across. And, uh, well, I, I imagine with their expenses round the clock, uh, 24 hours a day, uh, security, three uh, shifts of burly men guarding their hilltop Camelot in yeah. Montecito, you can burn through a lot of money very quickly. Oh, yeah. So I imagine looking at every means of, of raising cash. Yes, I'll be interested to see who's actually making the jam because I presume she's not going to be slaving away uh, in that fake kitchen there with the pot, with the pots and pans and the and the and all the, the sort of the copper um, and the, and the whisks and all the pots and, and various various plates and things. She won't be doing it, but it really is sort of a hell of a come down for what they said they were going to do. You know, they were going to have this charitable foundation. You know, this is just grubby commercialism, isn't it? I don't blame them for doing it, but they can hardly claim to be you know the saviors of the world selling jam. And pans. Well, I think some of their other plans have run into the sand, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they wanted to dominate the media. They wanted to initiate good programs. I mean, the only one that really had any traction was the six-parter called, imaginatively, Harry and Meghan, <laughs> that went on and on and on. And right. it was essentially one long whine about their privileged life. Right. Here they are, Michael. Let's just think about it. They're good-looking people. They've got more money you can shake a stick at. They've got two beautiful, healthy children, not counting the rescue chickens. They're surrounded by people in California who say, aren't you wonderful? You're terrific. You're mm -hmm. fabulous. And, and yet they behave as if they've got the worries of the world on their shoulders. They should be hugging themselves with yeah. glee that they're so lucky. And when people around the world who are really having it tough at this time, particularly at this time, hear all that, I think they must wonder, what planet are you on? Yeah. Uh, in America, they often say that California is very different. I've heard Americans say, because of the continental shift, all the nuts rolled to California. I don't know whether that's true, <laughs> but certainly it's a different world and they seem to have imbibed it very deeply. Yes, they really do. And also, the other weird thing, thank you very much indeed, Michael, we've got to let you go there. Uh, in America, jam is called jelly. So it's actually a jelly business she's now running. 